So we've looked at basic differentiation. We've looked at using differentiation with tangents and normals. And now we're going to look at stationary points, or you might have called them turning points before now. So if we consider a cubic graph, It has got a turning point here where the graph turns and goes in the other direction. And it's got a turning point down here. Now, if we look at the tangents at those turning points, we can see that the tangent is horizontal. which means the gradient of it is zero. So for turning points, we say dy by dx equals zero. This is clearly a maximum turning point here and a minimum turning point down at the bottom. We can also get a thing called a point of inflection. Excuse my drawing of this curve now. Okay, so a curve that looks something like that. Um, our point here at naught naught is called a point of inflection. Now, for years, I have been writing it as inflection with an X, and apparently that's from Old English as opposed to the CT. Uh, either way is fine with me though. Okay, and still here though, if you do your tangent in here, dy by dx is still not. This is sometimes called a saddle point. Apparently this, the shape of this curve is supposed to look like a saddle. So to find the nature of a turning point. We use d2y by dx squared. Okay, so the nature is just, is it a maximum, is it a minimum, or is it a point of inflection? So if d2y by dx squared is greater than naught, we have a minimum. If d2y by dx squared is less than naught, we have a maximum. And if d2y by dx squared equals naught, it's probably a point of inflection. And we'll come back to that when we do an example. And then just to remind you of something we looked at when we looked at sketching graphs. You might be asked about where it's increasing and decreasing. So mark on where our maximum and minimums are. So this is where the graph is increasing. Then between this point here and this point here, this is where it's decreasing. And then after this point, it's increasing again. Example one, then find the turning points of the following and state their nature. So part A, y equals x squared minus 4x plus 2. You need some common sense here as well. You know what a quadratic graph looks like. So you've got this kind of shape here. For a, positive, for a positive quadratic, so you're expecting to get a minimum turning point, okay? And you're expecting just to be one turning point for a quadratic graph. So for turning points, dy by dx is needed. So differentiate and we we'll get 2x minus 4. For turning points, that equals 0. So x is going to equal 2. Once we've got the x value, we need to get the y value. So put it into our equation. So 2 squared 
minus 4 times 2 plus 2 and we get the y value is minus 2 and then we need to know the nature so d2y by dx squared so we're differentiating dy by dx and we get 2 that's greater than naught therefore it is a minimum as we um, thought it was going to be so our answer the coordinates are 2 minus 2 and that is a minimum Part B then, y equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x plus 3. And again, we're finding the turning points and stating their nature. Right. This is a cubic. So, you know your rough shape of a cubic? You'd be expecting two turning points then. So, the first thing we're going to do is get dy by dx. 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. Put that equal to naught. To get our turning points. I'm just going to divide that by three to make it easier to factorize. And you get that x is one and three. For each of our x values, then we're going to need to find the y value. And we're going to need to find d2y by dx squared. So let's just differentiate again here then. And we get 6x minus 12. So let's take x equals 1 first of all. So put it in to get our y coordinate. So that's 1 cubed minus 6 times 1 squared plus 9 times 1 plus 3. And that gives us 7. And d2y by dx squared is going to be 6 times 1 minus 12, which gives us minus 6, which is less than not. So that's our first point then. 1, 7 is going to be a maximum. When x equals 3 then, put it into our equation for y. So we'll get 3 cubed minus 6 times 3 squared plus 9 times 3 plus 3. And we get our y value is 3. Put it into d2y by dx squared. We get 6 times 3 minus 12. So that's 6. That's greater than naught. So our point three three is a minimum. We'll look now at um, y equals x cubed. Now hopefully you know the shape of that graph and that you could draw it without doing any work and I and you can see that it's a point of inflection. But we'll now just go um through the method then of how you would prove that. So dy by dx differentiate, we get 3x squared. So I'm going to let that equal naught as normal. So we get that x is naught. Putting that into our equation, we also get that y is naught. And then if we do d2y by dx squared, that's 6x. So if x is naught, this will be naught. So whenever you see that, you say, okay, well, it's not greater than naught, it's not less than naught, so I'm assuming it's a point of inflection. But what you have to do is we have to find the value of dy by dx just before the turning point or the stationary point and just after. So let's keep it easy. Let's try for what happens when x is minus 1 and when x is plus 1. So dy by dx when x is minus 1 is 3 times minus 1 squared and we get 3. When x is 1, dy by dx is 3 times 1 squared, which is 3. Now the number doesn't matter. It happens to be the same here. It, uh, it's the sign that matters. These are the same sign 
both positive. So therefore we can say that this is a point of inflection. If we look at the graph, that's fine, the tangent before and the tangent afterwards, you would expect them to both be positive. And if it happened to be a graph going the other way, something like that, where you've got a saddle point, you would expect dy by dx, the tangent before, to be negative and the tangent afterwards to be negative. So they have to be the same sign for a point of inflection. Typical exam question, now sketch the curve y equals x cubed plus 4x squared minus 3x. So the first thing we're worried about are the x and y axes. So you say, well, what happens when x is not? When we put that into our equation, we get that y is not. And then you say, well, what happens when y is not? So we'll have to solve this equation. Now this is a straightforward one to solve because we can just take x out and we're left with x is not or this quadratic equals not. You may get one where you have to use the factor theorem and divide in and a harder um, or cubic to factorize in this one here. Now, the, this one won't factorize when we get it into a quadratic, so we have to use the quadratic formula. And the two values for x are minus 2 plus and minus root 7. So that's where it crosses the axis. And then we'll go on to find the turning points. So again, we'll find dy by dx. So that's 3x squared plus 8x minus 3. Put that equal to naught. And we get that x, when we solve that, we get x is a third and minus 3. And now for each of those points, we'll have to find the y-coordinate and we'll have to find what d2y by dx squared is. So let's find d2y by dx squared. I differentiate it again, and we get that 6x plus 8. So x equals a third, first of all. Put that into our equation. We get y equals a third cubed plus 4 times a third squared minus 3 times a third. So that to be minus 14 and 27. And d2y by dx squared is 6 times a third plus 8. That's 10, which is greater than naught, therefore a minimum. So that's our first turning point then is a third minus 14 over 27. And we we'll have a minimum. And now we're going to look then and do exactly the same thing for x equal minus 3. When x equals minus 3, y is going to equal minus 3 cubed plus 4 times minus 3 squared minus 3 times minus 3. And that works out to be 18. d2y by dx squared is going to be 6 times minus 3 plus 8. That's minus 10, which is less than 0. So it's a maximum. So we'll put the point minus 3, 18, and it's a maximum. So now we have to sketch the curve. It's probably going to be a bit dodgy on here. Um, we have got that it goes up as far as 18. Okay, so it's minus 3, 18. There's a turning point up there. We have where it crosses the x axis. Roughly there, there, and there. And then 
at a third it comes down to minus 14 over 27 down here so you should find this easier to draw a smooth curve on a page than on this screen but that's roughly what the graph should look like